Dr. Fizz, theoretical physics, transfer functions. But first, we're going to drive an LP filter, a low pass filter, with a sinusoidal wave and see what happens. Now, this is the filter we have studied before, and we have hit it with a square pulse, and out comes a charge up phase and a discharge phase. And we discovered in past videos that the general solution of the charge on the capacitor is given by the convolution of the input voltage function with the impulse response of the system, the Green's function, e to the minus t. Now this is the unshifted Green's function. When you do the convolution, you do the t minus u shift and integrate moment by moment over your past history up to time t. So the Green's function in the notation here with the t comma u builds in that shift and you can think of this as summing up your past. U are the past times and by integrating the Green's function takes care of each little strip, impulse strip, that the input function is doing applying this response to the impulse and this response from the Dirac delta function, see that's your basic Green's function response, when you time shift that and apply it to each of your FU's coming in there, moment by moment you get the effect of the charge at the present time T. So we're going to do this with a sinusoidal input function and we do the uh, convolution. We are con involving the input function with the response, the impulse response uh, function, the Green's function here. Uh, so we would say in convolution terms we are convolving f of t with g of t and when you write the Green's function in this fashion it's already built in nice integral for you to do the job. So let's do it. We come down here and we say well it would be better to do an exponential and take the imaginary part if you have the sine since that's cosine plus i sine and here just remember the u variable goes in for the f of t and the Green's function comes here on the left. So using the real imaginary trick where here I want to take the imaginary part to get the sine, you could have uh, used the cosine and take the real part, but I'm going to do the imaginary part because I want to start this off with a sine wave. So here we go. It's time to do some integration and here we have an easy integral to do the e to the minus t that's up here can be pulled out and that leaves e to the plus u very nicely multiplying e to the i omega u. So we integrate this, this is in the exponent here a 1 plus i omega, the u factors out and the integral is simply the same thing with the 1 plus i omega in the denominator. If you take a derivative of this with respect to u, you pull down what's in front of that u cancels this and you get back there. I always like to do a check by taking a derivative to make sure I've done the integral correctly. Evaluate this at 0 and t. At t u is replaced by t and at 0 u being replaced by 0 gives you simply a 1 over that denominator so you have the exponent with the t minus the 1. Well, what about the uh, imaginary? Well, I, I don't like this i hiding down here in the denominator, so I multiply top and bottom by the complex conjugate to free up the i down there, and that gives me here 1 plus omega squared in the denominator and the 1 minus i omega there. Notice I broke this up into two parts so I could see e to the t and e to the i omega t. I think that's cute. And it also encourages me to bring that e to the minus t in to knock this off. So then I have here, when I bring that in, let's go ahead and do that part here. I then get rid of the e to the t here. And then over here I have e to the minus t. And that looks neat. You have here i omega t and just a minus t. Well, I still have i here and I have i up there. so. I'm going to take my time here and break this up into two parts, the imaginary part of the e i omega t with everything, minus the imaginary 
of e to the minus t with everything else. So that minus sign is down in here. And I can see that the second one is easy to do because here I have one i in the numerator, no other i's, and the imaginary part, you go right in there and pick off what multiplies the i. Well, it's minus omega. So the minus omega over the denominator and this e to the minus t hangs around and I'm finished. That's the imaginary part. If you wanted to take the real part and deal with a cosine, you could do that, but I got an input sine wave, so I'm going for the uh, imaginary part. Over here, I've done nothing. I've just simply written that down here. I'll, we'll look at that one next. And for that one, we replace the e to the i omega t with cosine omega t plus i sine omega t, the Euler relation there, and then I see that, well, I have i here and i there, so when this i hits that i, I'll have, I'll have a real, I don't want that, and when cosine hits the one, I'll have a real, I don't want that, so I want one of these that, without the i and one over here with the i. Uh, so here, the cosine omega t goes with the minus omega that's here, that's the imaginary part there at that i, and then when this i hits that one, I'll have the sine of omega t, which I wrote first because it has the plus sign, and you have the same denominator. So that's our result. Notice that we have two pieces, and look at this one. This one goes to zero as t goes on, so wait a minute, if t is equal to zero, then that's like omega over this, but wait a minute, the charge is zero at the beginning. But look, over here, if you put in t is zero, this is gone. You have minus omega times one, and this is plus omega times one, because t is equal to zero, and you do get zero. But what's neat is that this is a transient part. We call that a transient part of the solution, qt transient. That's going to vanish as t goes on. It's like you shock the system, all of a sudden there was nothing, and all of a sudden there's a sinusoidal wave kicking in, and whoa, this starts to uh, do something and it gets adjusted, and then uh, after a, a second, a split second or so, this is electronics, uh, things uh, goes to zero very, very quickly here, this transient part, so it doesn't take long, this is basically gone, and things have settled down, and I'm forcing the system doing this. So that's the solution I'm interested in, the steady state solution. So we have here a dimensional problem in that I'd like to see this to be dimensionally correct and because I made r is equal to 1 ohm and c is 1 farad, all the r's and c's are gone. So here's a neat trick, magic, dimensional analysis to get the right dimensions you know that RC has dimensions of time because when I showed you the exponential decay I had for the discharge of the capacitor e to the minus t over RC so RC seconds that means 1 over RC frequency per second so I'm going to set that equal to an omega sub c where c stands for cutoff and you'll see later in this chapter that this is indeed the cutoff frequency when the frequency is compared to this that's how you define what's low and what's high. Uh, low is a lot less than this and high is, is gr a lot greater than this. So I'm going to call that the cutoff frequency and then uh, do you see that uh, see that one right there? See that one right there? That one there is really omega sub c. How do I know this? Well look there's an omega here. Cosines and sines are dimensionless. Notice that omega t is dimensionless. Seconds and one over seconds because you can't take the sine of seconds. Like what's that? You take the sine of a pure number. No dimensions. So here I have an omega. I have to have an omega here and it's there. So you, it, it's a one over rc is going to be there. In fact if we did the calculation with the r and c it would be there. But here we're using this dimensional trick. It's got to be there. There it is, it's a 1. So you put in omega c, just stick it in there. And then here, well that's omega squared, so that's 1 over second squared. This has to be 1 over second squared. It's there. So there it is, see, it's there squared. So go ahead and square this and you got it. Neat little trick to save ourselves the time of writing r and c every step of the way. This is a nice powerful trick in theoretical physics to do this kind of thing. So we have this nice solution and you might say well that's not really cool I'm as well right there's more to play with that if you you had to because my input voltage here is a one and you could could, you could put here a v sub naught a volts but I, I'm happy enough with this for now because I can now show you that the sine 
wave shifted is your output. I'm going to do that with a trigonometric identity that we looked at earlier in our course, this thing here, and compare that with what I have here. You can see I have here with uh, alpha being omega t, I have an omega t here with the sine, and I have something else, like some constant thing, which is cosine beta, related to cosine beta. And here I have cosine of alpha, cosine of omega t, with some minus sine, with some sine beta. So here's the magic way to get everything to fall into place. You make this nice triangle, this nice cool triangle where you have omega here and omega sub c there, and then the Pythagorean theorem gives you that square root. But then you can see that omega is equal to the sine of beta times the hypotenuse. Uh, the sine of beta times the hypotenuse, that's omega. Uh, now you could define, of course, the sine is you know the uh, opposite divided by the hypotenuse. Well, it's the same thing here. If I divide by this, I have that. But I want to think of it in terms of what these two pieces are. So I'm going to write here omega sub c this side is the cosine of beta times the hypotenuse, you see. And that gets me this one. So then I go ahead and plug these in up here and up there, and now things are looking real close to uh, the trigonometric identity up in here. So we're going to do that. We just go ahead and plug those in, and then we can see that a square root will cancel. So in the denominator, you'll have a square root. And then you have your cosine and your sine, just like the identity says up here, where you get then the sine of that quantity alpha minus beta. So that means this has to be your alpha here, make it t minus beta. And that's showing you that you're forcing this. See, input sine wave is forcing the output after the transient part you know, goes away. Uh, you're forcing the situation. You're forcing this. You have a sine wave that shifted with this phase. And that phase, uh, that beta, by the way, is uh, given really conveniently by the tangent. Tangent of beta is omega over omega sub c. So we do that. And we are all set here with everything. But the electrical engineer likes to know how much amplitude we got coming out compared to what's going in. So let's go ahead and make the input uh, v sub naught uh, volts there times the sine of omega t, or driving Input, input uh, voltage, and here our output, this V naught will carry through all the way, so it will be there, and then I'm going to use dimensional analysis to get my answer. I know to get volts, I have volts, so that means everything else must be dimensionless. Well, if I have the square root of omega squared, I have an omega kind of thing down there, so I need omega C here to kill that, so the dimensions come out, and that's my answer, so that's the shortcut. So I didn't have to worry about the capacitor, I'm going right to the voltage across the capacitor, so I'd have to bring in C. I just use the dimensional analysis at this level. So what is this amplitude here compared to the input one? Well, the sine goes from minus one to plus one, and so we're really interested in taking everything else, all this part here, the amplitude divided by V naught. So we do that by this um, convention here. You're taking here like the uh, absolute magnitude or like the amplitude information here. So that's simply the omega C divided by that square root. That's it. That's the transmission for the filter. Now I can prove to you that's a low pass filter. And I proved that by simply using it here with the omega being small. Now you can see why the cutoff makes sense because when I say small, I mean omega is a lot less than the cutoff. When that is the case, then this is essentially the cutoff square down here. Take square root, get cutoff, and take that ratio, you get one. Low pass. Those low pass frequencies get through 100%. See? And then here you get uh, for the high pass, omega goes a lot greater than omega sub c, you get then one, well, over infinity or this over infinity, uh, and you get zero. Now, you know, that's going to happen here for the real, real low frequencies, but then as you get close to this, then this will be close to one, well, it starts to, you know, it starts to then uh, go to zero. So, but here, if you're less than the cutoff by an appreciable amount, hey, you're in, you pass. And then if you're greater, you don't. Well, the electrical engineers like to use the uh, phi angle to plus sign, and that's simply the minus of what I had. So therefore, the tangent of phi for electrical engineer is given by minus omega over omega sub c. And uh, this is your result. 
and very, very, very nice result in electrical engineering. In our next section here, when we do phasers, I'll show you a way that you can get the same result without using Green's functions and convolutions, but a real, really nifty way of doing it.